Ricardo, uh, this uh, initial lecture is about management control systems. So this will set the tone for the entire semester as we discuss or as we delve on the issues and uh, concerns with respect to management control. Now, I know this is a new idea from your point of view because management control isn't something that we see in most courses in the college, but uh, I know this is something that you already learned in your BA 101 as part of your four principal dimensions of management. So those four key dimensions, as you know, are planning, organizing, leading, and the last is controlling. So this course will focus on the controlling aspect of management. You know, what is management control and why is it critical in the whole loop of managing anything, any strategy or managing uh, any organization. Okay, So let's first define what is management control. Okay, So management control systems is comprised of a combination of control practices. That's one term that we need to be familiar about designed and implemented by top managers to increase the probability that lower level managers and employees will behave in ways consistent with missions, goals, and strategies. So if you look at that definition, there are several important uh, components of that definition. First is it is a control practice. No? Ano ibig sabihin ng practice? What does practice means? What does practice mean? No? Practice, no, uh, practice comprises of different aspects or different rules, no? different systems in place, different um, know-how, or different ways to do things. Yan yung pinaka-generic, di ba? The way you do things is your practice for that, uh, for that process or for that, uh, for that implementation. You know? So when we talk about management control, we're talking about practices. And since we're talking about practices, we're talking about implementation. Okay. Management control uh, deals with the implementation aspect of an organization. Okay. And what does do, ano ang ginagawa ng mga practices na yon? The practices intend to lower the probability that, uh, so, sorry, to increase the probability that lower level managers will behave in ways consistent with mission, goals, and strategies. As you know, strategies are usually, um, usually crafted at the top level of management. Diba? Top management, they set the strategy of the organization. But of course, lower level management are expected to implement those strategies. Right? Top management cannot do it by their own. There are simply too many uh, activities to do you know, for top management to implement strategies on their own. They need their lower level managers. Okay? Now, there is a problem. No, what is this problem? The problem is since the strategies were crafted by as if by a different set of people, by top management, pwedeng mayroong disconnect between top management and lower level management. Okay, and that disconnect, okay, causes problems. So there might be some form of disconnect between strategy and implementation. And that causes some problems. What are the problems of those disconnect? Siyempre, the strategies are good in paper, but you don't see them materializing in the field or in actuals, right? And that disconnect might be or is called goal incongruence. Hindi congruent yung goals ng mga tao sa organization. Okay? So management control seeks to increase the probability that there will be no disconnect 
that your lower level managers will behave consistently no in a consistent manner versus the mission goals and strategies of an organization so the aspect of management which removes goal incongruence and removes disconnect that is called the management control system they ensure that whatever is on paper in terms of strategies gets implemented on the ground and implementation of course is led by lower level management that's why management control is very important you no know? uh, management control seeks to ensure that strategy is being implemented so you have to form that set of systems that will ensure that strategies are being implemented otherwise strategies are only pieces of paper or presentation or powerpoint presentations you no know? they're useless if they are not being implemented and the system in place to make sure that it is being implemented is called management control okay another definition that's a little bit simpler is management control is the process by which managers influence other members of the organization to implement the organization strategy okay if you notice behavior and influence are important or critical terms in the definition okay kasi of course you cannot control a person on what he or she is going to do or decide on no but there has to be a set system in place that will allow that person that lower level manager to decide according to to decide and to behave in such a way that the outcome behavior is consistent with the strategies of an organization essentially that is management control okay behavior is important and influence is important because we have free will as people right if you're a lower lower level manager you no know, there might be some behavioral issues or behavioral uh, or you you may be influenced by your behavior you no know, in terms of what gets done or what does not get done okay so for example meron kang dalawang tasks a and b Uh, pero yung task A, hindi naman yan important from your point of view. Kasi tingin mo, hindi mo naintindihan kung bakit kailangan gawin yun. Kung bakit nagko-contribute sa strategy yun. So you might be incentivized or you might perceive that task A is not important. So your behavior toward task A you know, will not be, you'll not be enthusiastic to do task A kasi feeling mo hindi, hindi part ng strategy. Right? Pero task B, part yan ng scorecard mo, for example, ng evaluation mo, edi siyempre, doon ka magbibigay ng more attention. So, your behavior is influenced no, by how you are measured. And so, therefore, um, yung how you are measured, that's part of the overall idea behind the management control system. Okay? Let's try to discuss a little bit more about uh, management control systems and... Uh, its uh its role in the organization so management control systems also enable also enable innovative activities using input and output control so we'll discuss input and output controls later okay so management control also has an enabling role you no know? it parang ang important yung maintindihan also is that management control enables people you no know, so that they are able to to uh to to fulfill the mission strategies and goals of the organization okay and of course management control serves also as have two purposes number one is to ensure alignment between plans and actions implemented by an organization strategy looks good in paper but do you know the steps you need to do to achieve that strategy Once you have the steps, do you know who's going to do it? Once you know who's going to do it, are you giving that person enough resources to do what needs to be done so that strategy will ultimately be achieved? So those are all related to management control. That's why it's very important. Okay? Also, management control provides feedback to top management of the results of implementation that will aid in calibrating tactics to implement the overall strategy management control diba ito alignment so parang enabling 
rule. Right? That's what this is. The second bullet point simply says that management control is e also a feedback mechanism. Okay? It's also a feedback mechanism. Okay? It provides feedback mechanism. Kasi kung you're able to track what's happening on the ground, you're able to track um, what's happening, then it can be an input on how you can recalibrate strategies. Right? Ah, strategy A is not working. So we need to tweak it. And probably we still have the second quarter or third quarter of the year to try to recalibrate it. Now, without a feedback mechanism, pwedeng you'll be stray, of course, for a long period of time without you noticing. No? So management control also serve that purpose, the feedback mechanism. Okay? Now, of course, the goal congruence issue also is influenced by the size of organizations. Diba sabi natin, management control is important so that we can ensure that top level, the strategy set by top level management is implemented by lower level management. Okay? But if the organization, of course, is too small, right? De baka kokonti lang yung uh, issues, potential issues with respect to not understanding strategy or not implementing strategy. No? So actually, management control systems are more influential and more critical for large organizations. Lalo na kung hindi mo naman nakikita yung ginagawa ng lahat ng tao in your organization. Kung lilima lang kayo in your company, okay, then simpler management control systems na yung kailangan mo. Kasi the probability that there's goal incongruence is lower. Right? Because it's easy to track. It's easy to track what's your, what your people is uh, doing in the organization. However, for large organizations, na maraming layers of management, then you really have to put a system in place. Otherwise, wala kang idea kung ano nangyayari sa isang part of your organization. So that's why the size also influence the type of management control system that you put in place. Okay? Uh, next, we define management control and, and, and um, contrast it against strategy formulation. Strategy formulation, by the words, it's the, it, the words themselves, strategy and formulation is the process of deciding on the goals of the organization and the strategies for attaining these goals. Strategy formulation is the master plan. Strategy formulation is the map from point A to point B how are you going to get there? You wrote it in a map or you drew it in a map. You wrote it as a manual or as a PowerPoint presentation. That's what strategy formulation is. Okay. So strategy formulation is composed of two critical areas. First, you need to decide on the goals of the organization. Okay. And of course, define strategies on how you are going to attain these goals. Later, we have an example on GLOBE. And we'll explain this more later. Okay, pero the point is, strategy formulation is a plan. It's a piece of paper. It's a PowerPoint presentation of what, where you want to be, which is the goal. Okay, and what are you going to do to attain these goals, which is the strategy. Okay, now what is management control and how is it different from strategy formulation? Management control is the dirty, parang the, the dirty aspect of management. By dirty, meaning ito talaga yung nagtatrabaho, right? Because management control is the process of implementing those strategies, okay? And we implement by making sure that lower level management, okay, uh, has knowledge of strategy, Okay. Lower level management agrees and has buy-in on the strategy. And lower level management have the resources to implement strategy. Okay. All of these things are part of, man of the management control process. So even though if you have a very good strategy formulated, but if there is very weak management control, we don't expect strategy to materialize. Okay, so that's how important management control is. Strategy won't happen even though it's the brightest 
it's the brightest uh, logic, brand logic, for example, or best brand architecture. But if there are no management control processes in place, then it is likely to fail. You know? And that's why management control is very important. Okay. However, management control naman is not as detailed as task control. So what's task control? Basically, the process of assuring that specified tasks are carried out effectively and efficiently, meaning uh, kailangan mong gawin si task A, B, C, and D. Management control does not say na when you establish a management control system, it doesn't seek to have eyes hovering over your employees na, oh, nagawa mo na ba yung ta task A by 5 p.m.? Hindi ganun ang management control system. Okay? Management control system provides the environment to ensure that strategy is implemented. Okay? It is not to the point of transactional monitoring of tasks. Okay? So that's what management control is all about. Okay? So I know it can be a little bit vague at this point of what management control is, but that's the point. We are going to um, study it further throughout the semester. And some of the concepts that we will use for management control, you know already. Say, for example, uh, variance analysis. That's a way to, to determine feedback, you know, to have feedback on operations. So providing management reports on uh, segment segment or divisional income statements are part of management control systems. So eventually, this is, will become more familiar and more uh, more more practical for you, okay? But essentially, that's what management control is, okay? Now, why is there a need for management control? I alluded to these three aspects a while ago. The first uh, reason why there might be a need for management control is number one, employees may not automatically understand the missions, goals, and strategies of an organization, no, and nor know how they can contribute to these. Remember, strategies are usually top level, you know, top level initiative ang strategies. Kasama ba yung mga accountants mo sa strategies formulation? Most likely not, right? Because because it being a strategic activity, usually yung mga mas matataas sa organization lang ang involved sa strategy formulation. And because of that, there might be a disconnect. No? Kung ano yung gusto ng top level might not be understandable to lower level management. Okay? And they might not know how they are going to contribute towards those goals. So for example, the goal might be to expand in Southeast Asia. For example, you're a local company and then sabi mo, okay, it's time to expand in Southeast Asia. Okay? That's the aspiration of top-level management. There's a need for management control because you want to ensure that your lower-level management understands why those uh, missions, goals, and strategies are being put in place. How will it benefit them? Okay, And how can they contribute? If you're the accounting controller, for example, or the accounting, uh, or accounting staff, Anong pakialam ko sa strategy natin? How can I contribute there? Right? So, there has to be a way to connect people to the high-level strategy. And the way to connect them is through management control systems. So, how do you connect them? Oh, probably, gagawa ka ng lower-level strategies. Okay? Pag gumawa ka ng lower level strategies, let's say departmental level, then makikita nila how their output will contribute to the grand strategy. Right? So that's one way to ensure that uh, your lower level managers uh, understand the mission goals of an organization and how you can contribute to them. Okay? Second need for management control is that lower level managers may not automatically agree with the strategies of a company. Okay? Siyempre, kung yung managers, na lower level managers, they don't agree, eh di baka hindi sila motivated to implement the strategy because they do not agree with it. Okay? 
So you have to make sure that you have the buy-in of lower level managers. Otherwise, without their buy-in, there can be hindi, hindi inefficient yung, opera, yung implementation because there's resistance. Okay? And also, lower level managers might say na, ah, mas alam ko yung nangyayari on the ground. Hindi yan tatanggapin ng mga customer natin. For example, may pinupush na produkto yung, yung top level management. Okay? Ah, expand tayo and try to provide uh, digital products rather than physical products. For example, creatives. Okay? Pero sabihin ng sales manager sa iyo, ah, actually, wala namang market yan eh. No? They know what's going on the ground and they have resistance. So how do you deal with that? No? You have a management control in place to make sure that you are able to get the buy-in of your uh, of your uh, of your team. Okay? And third, lastly, third need for management control is that lower level managers may not automatically have the resources needed to act. They might understand their contribution. They might be able to uh, agree. They might agree with the strategy, but they don't have the resources they need so that they can implement the strategy. They don't have the money. That's number one, monetary resources. They don't have the skills to implement. So that's HR related. So managers personal skills, or they don't have the physical resources. Kulang ang tao nila. So for example, the, the strategy is invest in Southeast Asia. Acquire a company in Southeast Asia. Eh, pero wala naman siya mapadalang tao kasi lahat, uh, lahat bugged down by the current operations. And so therefore, strategy also won't fly. So management control also ensures that resources are uh, needed no needed resources are available to the organ to those implementing strategy no so those are the different facets of management control that needs to be uh, solved no that's where management control exists okay now in terms of uh, management control there's what we call a top down or bottom up management control system Essentially, I alluded to this a while ago. Na, no? Top-down management control systems are ways for top managers no? to implement appropriate control practices so that lower-level uh, employees have a clear sense of what decisions to take. So kaya siya top-down kasi para siyang instructions from the top. Okay. Para siyang utos from above the organization or practices that was developed from above the organization or from the top of the hierarchy na o okay, kayo, ganito ang gagawin nyo. Okay. So that to ensure that you are all aligned with strategy. Okay. So that's one aspect of MCS or management control systems. Okay. Bottom up, on the other hand, no, refers to the feedback mechanism. function of management control systems. So you report on the achievement so that you inform top management na all oh, your strategy is working or not working. Okay? So ganun. That's, what's the, that's what bottom-up management control systems are. Okay? So for example, so here we have a table. No? The first column, we have the different uh, problems that we are encountering. That's why we need management control systems. And the next two columns provide top-down and bottom-up functions of management control systems. So first, lower-level managers may not automatically um, understand the mission goals and of the organization. That is the problem that we want to solve. Under a top-down, function of management control systems, ano kaya yung pwedeng gawin? Okay. Number one, pwede mong gawin, you explain the mission, goals, and strategies in, in as operational a way as possible. Okay. Meaning, 
Gusto mong ibaba. What is the specific contribution of a department towards this goals? No? So, kailangan ma-explain yun. Okay? Within the organization. So, that's one way of making sure that that's, a, that's a, a type of management control system or a component of the management control system. Okay? In fact, some organizations ginagawa nila when there's a strategy, meron yang meron yang like communication plan. Okay? How do we explain this to our people so that they understand where we are coming from? No? So, ini-involve pa yung communications group, gumagawa ng campaign, no or commercial or activities within the organization so that everyone will feel that they're involved in strategy everyone will understand what strategy is no for example if you go to Procter and Gamble for example meron yang sales conferences okay yung sales conferences tinitipon lahat ng sales people and then the central management or the HQ na sales okay will have will explain the overall strategy and will explain ano ang kanilang mga toka within no, the overall sales strategy of the organization. Kaya may mga sales conference to do that, to fire up also, no, to fire up people na, okay, ito ang ating strategy, this is where we want to be, we need your help. No? So that's something that happens in sales conferences of uh, FMCGs. No? So maraming ways for you to be able to communicate strategy directly to your uh, to your people. So that's one way of top down that's one kind of manage or component of management control system na top down yung approach. So it addresses na hindi na intindihan yung mission's goals. Okay? So what's a bottom up role naman of management control system? Okay? So Lower la level managers may report on goal achievement okay, and provide inputs when goals are unrealistic. So parang you involve them in the strategy management process. Okay? So pag hindi na-achieve, tanungin mo yung lower level sa kanilang report. O oh, lower level managers, bakit ba hindi na-achieve na yung goals? Okay? Ah, then sasabihin nila kung bakit. And then that's a way for you to explain a stop management Na, ah, kasi ganito dapat yung intindi natin sa missions, goals, and strategies. Okay? So, when they report on goal achievement, ibig sabihin yan, you have already set goals for business units and even people within the organization. And when you set goals, meron kang tinatawag na score cards. Okay? Right? And those scorecards define what is success in an organization. And the definition of success in an organization, na farm out yan within the organization. No? And once that, that, uh, that uh, measure of success is farmed out over the organization, then mas nagkakaroon ng understanding kung ano ba yung goals, strategies of the organization. No? So, Making a scorecard, setting goals for each and every unit in the organization, that's also part of management control systems. Okay? Number two, lower level managers may not automatically agree with the organizational mission. So, ano, mag, ano ngayon yung magiging top down role of management. Of course, education is one. That's one control practice. No. Second, you motivate. Uh, you motivate them. No, to strive for organization goals. No, and also you can actually do what's called participative strategic management. Meaning, isama mo sila sa strategy process. Strategy process, right? make sure that may feedback mechanism. Okay? Right? So, that feedback mechanism is also part of the bottom-up role of management control systems. Okay? Third is resources. No? 
may resources ba to implement strategy. So what's the top-down role of management? Siyempre, sa budgeting process, sasabihin na ninyo yung, yung resource allocation. Right? Uh, gusto ko maraming budget natin sa sales because malaki yung hinihingi natin sa kanila as part of strategy. Okay? So, top, yun yung top-down uh, management control through the budget. Okay? So, this is through the budget. Ito naman, yung lower level managers can provide feedback so that resources are allocated properly. How, paano mag-feedback? Pwede through variance analysis. Right? Sa variance analysis, nakikita natin, ah, kulang yung binadget, gawa ng ganito. So it could be a way for lower level managers to say na, okay, kulang ang budget, so pwede nating dagdagan. Okay? So variance analysis could be part of your control practices as part of the management control system. Okay? So there, so that's one example of, or, or those are examples of top-down and bottom-up uh, rules of management control systems. So when we talk about management control practices, there are three types of management control practices. Input controls, throughput controls, and output controls. Madali siyang maintindihan. Input is input, di ba? Into a system. Throughput is the process. Output is the results. So when we talk, talk about input controls, we're talking about how to control the input. In this case, the input is people. Ano ang cognitive abilities? What are the skills? What are the values that those people should have? So that they will have inputs or skills that, are, that will allow them to contribute to mission, goals, and strategies. Okay? Now, when we talk about throughput naman, we're talking about processes. No? And we're talking about the organization as a whole. Okay? So, we will have to design processes and we'll have to design an organizational structure that will allow it no, to, that will allow it to respond appropriately to the missions, goals, and strategies of the organization. And lastly, output control talks about results. My results na, but, uh, no? And through those results, no, it has to be controlled so that it is within or it is in line with missions, goals, and strategies of the organization. So those are the three types of controls. You control the... You, the first set of practices are practices towards enhancing the cognitive abilities, skills, and values of your people. The second type of control practice is something that will related to processes within your organization and the organization structure. Okay? And the last type of management control is to manage performance and manage results. How do you measure good performance? Okay? What constitutes good results? Defining that and assigning it to people is part of output controls. Okay, let's discuss this a little bit more. So input controls refers to people, specifically their capabilities, characteristics, knowledge, and intentions. Okay, so yung mga nakalista dyan, some those are some types of input controls or input control practices. Number one, of course, is the employee selection process. You hire good people. Because if you hire good people, then they have the skills that will allow them to implement the strategy of an organization. Kung kailangan mo ng magaling na engineer, kasi kailangan mo ng, for example, your strategy is to be more efficient in your construction. Edi eh dapat yung employee selection processes mo is aligned with that. Right? So, hire ka rin ng good engineers. Okay? So, you have, and for you to be able to do that, there should be a robust employee selection process in place. So that controls the input to your, if your, effect, your eventual uh, objective, which is to implement your objectives or strategies or the, of the organization. Another is value statements. So in most organizations, nakalagay dyan yung values of the organization. Kasi these values are the characteristics of the people that you want to work for the organization. Kasi more likely, 
no, those people who have those values will be successful in implementing the strategy of an organization. Okay? So for example, there are some organizations that might need empathy. Okay? For example, public service. Okay? Or example, not say public service, but a business with public character. Uh, say electric utility. Okay? Miralco, yimbawa. Pwedeng one of their core values is uh, service for others. Right? It's important for them that each and every Miralco employee will have that value within them because that is critical to their business, to the success of their business, no, na service oriented no, as a utility. So therefore, that could be part of the employee selection process. It, it could be part of continuing programs to make sure that service for others is instilled in the organization. So part yun ng input control. Okay? Also, employee socialization processes or activities. No? In other words, relating to people, how do we ensure that our people are in the best frame of mind and best values that will enable them to contribute to the goals of the organization? And so that's what input controls are. No? Input controls also include organizational culture and among those things. Okay? Next is throughput controls. Throughput controls are formal delegation of decision-making responsibility to lower-level managers. Processes. How do you get things done? Essentially, those are throughput controls. So how do you get things done? There are two ways. Number one, merong kang rules within the organization. So merong kang job manuals, SOPs, code of conduct, policies. No, Those must be in place to support the implementation of strategy. So that's one type of throughput control. Next is the organization's architecture. The architecture, we talk about the org structure in itself. Functional bang org structure mo, matrix or project. And, and particularly for this class, we need to understand whether org structure impacts, okay, impacts the uh, way the organization delivers on the strategies of uh, set by top management. So that's why organizational structure is important. Collaboration structure with other entities through investments, through joint ventures. How do we collaborate with other entities? That's also part of uh, the organizational architecture. And also responsibility centers. Okay? How should responsibilities and accountabilities be delegated within the organization? Okay, because having the accountability also molds the type of behavior that a manager has with a with a specific activity. So, kung in charge ka, for example, sa making sure that kuryente uh, is available twenty four seven, and you're the accountable person for it. Sure, iba yung how you will manage kung hindi ka naman yung accountable person, right? So that design must be considered. So that's through responsibility centers. Okay? Lastly, our output controls. So making managers accountable through budgets. Okay? So through budgets and also through financial and non-financial performance measures. Ito yung mga tinatawag na scorecards. Okay? Or uh, evaluation metrics. Basically, what we want to know is, did you perform well or not? What is the measure of success? No? So how do we define what success means in an organization and within an organization? No? Kasi dapat yung measures of success within an organization nagsastack together and if they all... For example, nagawa ng lahat yung measures nila. Dapat nag-contribute yun sa overall goals of the organization. At all in all, dapat na-achieve ng organization yung strategy niya. Okay? Otherwise, there's something wrong on how we are uh, measuring the performance of people. And also risk management and how to deal with uncertainty. Okay? Now, scorecards are important because they are usually linked with management compensation and performance appraisal, including promotions. No? 
So we want to make sure that we are incentivizing the proper behavior, incentivizing the proper uh, uh, outcome, no? because it is usually linked to management compensation and linked to promotions later on. So we'll discuss more of that later. Okay. And of course, uh, management control system has both coercive and enabling uh, enabling attributes. So coercive, because siempre you want them to be to to behave a certain way. So you're going you you want them to be coerced to do something or to behave in a certain way. So that's one function of management control. But another function of management control is to enable them. The enabling function of management control. Okay, we want to make sure also that management control allows delegation of authority, allows participative uh, budgeting, for example, or participative strategic planning. You no, know, because if there are systems in place within the organization, then mas makaka contribute sila to the overall plan. No, and this is something that we will uh, demonstrate later when we delve on manage on the details of management control. Okay. So in the last few slides, let's look at GLOBE, for example. So if you look at GLOBE, here is the corporate objective of GLOBE. Okay. So vision is we see a Philippines where families' dreams come true, businesses flourish, and nation is admired. So that's the uh, vision of the organization. We have the mission. Okay. If you look at the vision and the mission, okay, um, okay laman yan. I mean, that's aspirational. Right, but if you're an accountant, for example, or a customer service representative, is this something that is that will uh, resonate to you? Probably yes, on an emotional perspective. But okay, fine. Yan ang vision natin. So anong gagawin ko so that I am able to fulfill the vision of the organization? Okay. So ang sa sabihin sa yun ng top management. Ah, meron tayong core strategies. Or core objectives. So if you look at the website of Globe, these are the core objectives or strategies of Globe. So number one, accelerate network rollout. So this is in 2019, so major late. So ito raw yung strategies ng Globe according to them. So let's go by it one by one. So first, accelerate network rollout. Number two, increase household penetration. Number three, develop ICT capabilities. Number four, habituate and monetize. Okay. So number five, create new and profitable revenue streams. Number six, an agile workforce. Okay. So if you look at those uh, strategies, wow, makes sense, right? That's something that what a telco should probably do. Okay. However, if you look at those strategies from the point of view of a lower level manager this is vague this is i understand the business so i know where this is coming from you no know? but what is my role role of a manager in all of this if you're an accountant what is your role how do you help in accelerating network to roll out how do you help develop ICT capabilities? How do you create new profitable revenue streams if you're the accountant? If you're the CS, customer service manager, okay, how do you contribute to network rollout? How do you contribute to increase household penetration? Okay. Of course, if you're, for example, the president of uh, Gcash, no? Alam mo na create new and profitable work streams. That's something that is very directly something that you can do, right? Habituate and monetize probably that's something that you know you have to do, right? Pero what's your contribution to accelerating rollout? No? Should I be even concerned about this as the president of Gcash or Mint, which is the company operating Gcash? Okay. Or probably develop ICT capabilities. Okay. Pero na-identify niya yan, yan ang toka niya sa total strategy kasi siya yung president of Gcash. 
mataas siya sa organization. Pero kung ikaw yung finance manager, specifically relating to treasury, for example, nagre-raise ng funding for GCash, hindi apparent kung ano yung contribution mo dyan. Right? And so, in a management control system should be in place okay, to ensure that you understand your role in all of these strategies. Okay? Halimbawa, okay, one role of the Treasury Department in all of these strategies is to make sure that funding is available. Right? Funding is available so that you can accelerate network rollout. Funding is available so that you can develop ICT capabilities and also invest in technology. Okay? By funding, meaning may pera. Kung sabihin ng engineering o kailangan na namin mag-build ng four towers, may pera tayo. No? That's my role no? as treasury manager or head of treasury, for example, to these strategies. Management control systems allows me no, to have a link no, to the strategy. Bakit? Ano ba yung management con control system dito? Pwedeng part of my scorecard in the organization is make sure that funding is available for CAPEX. So for example, ang CAPEX is sabi dito 51 billion. Right? So, ang token ng treasury to ensure na maka-accelerate is to make sure that funding worth 51 billion is available. No? So, saan papasok yung control practice? The control practice is a scorecard. Sa scorecard ng treasury or sa performance appraisal ng treasury, kailangan nandun sa target nila na mag-raise na mag, uh, sila ng 51 billion or ready to raise 51 billion. No? Kasi if the money is not there, the network cannot be accelerated. The rollout cannot be accelerated. And so therefore, nag-fail. Mag-fail yung strategy na yun. So ano yung control intervention? The control intervention is the scorecard or performance appraisal. Okay? Ano pang pwedeng control intervention? Okay? Tuwing merong new investments in network rollout, someone from Treasury should be attending that meeting. Okay? So for example, pag may CAPEX sila na gusto ng gastusin, okay, pwedeng may committee na gawin. Okay? That committee might be composed of the proponent, kung sino man yung engineering team na proponent, pwedeng may a-attend na galing finance. At pwedeng yung treasury ang mag attend Para alam niya yung funding needs palagi for CAPEX regular funding needs on CAPEX. So here you're enabling Treasury to be part of the decision-making process for CAPEX rollout. In that case, nakakapag-feedback siya, ito ang pera natin. In that case, nasasabi niya na, oh, nangutang na ako, nasa na ang CAPEX nyo? Kailangan nyo nang implement yung CAPEX nyo. Nasasabi ng Treasury yun. So napupush ngayon yung yung uh, engineering team to make sure that may implement yung topics. Okay? Now, so yung structure of responsibility, you're able to structure it in such a way that Treasury has a say on CAPEX implementation. So na-empower mo siya. So that is a control practice related to MCS. Okay? Essentially, ano ba, ano ba yung mga practice na kailangan natin i-establish so that to ensure na yung strategy natin to accelerate network work network rollout will happen okay so for example legal lawyers okay so pwedeng sabihin natin na oh part ng scorecard ng legal is to make sure na may kung may kailangang i-acquire na land for network rollout kasi kailangan ng lupa for towers right kailangan ng lupa So, legal lang may kailangan dyan. Kailangan, nabili nila yon within six months. That's the scorecard. Right? So, now, there is a direct link between the scorecard of lawyers no? right, to the overall strategy of the organization. Okay? 
also binibigyan mo rin ng capability si legal or yung mga lawyers mo to acquire properties. So for example, pwede mong sabihin na oh, legal binibigyan bigyan kita ng training on land acquisition. No? So the training is a control practice, right? Because it adds on to the skills of your lawyers. So by having those uh, trainings to make sure that they're able to acquire property faster, no, then that's a form of input control. No? So management control system actually encompasses more than accounting. Okay? It is multidisciplinary because it's anything that will ensure that the uh, strategies of an organization is implemented. Okay, So I hope it gives you a little bit of flavor of what management control systems is all about. So you can think of a lot of things. For example, ito, habituay, habituate and monetize. That's the strategy. How do we really implement that? That's the question. Now, once you have uh, listed the, how do we really implement that? How do we ensure that people are going to work together in achieving that? No? Then that's the management control system. Those are the control practices. Okay. I have another slide. So this, this just shows um, some metrics. Okay? So sabi sa 2020 financial statements ng Globe, yung accelerate network rollout nila ng strategy, ang performance nila is like this. They spent capex of 60.3 billion. Okay? They were able to build 1,300 new cell sites. Okay? They upgraded sites to 4G. They deployed 5G in these areas. Okay, there is an increase in FTTH rollout. I don't know what FTTH is. No. Mobile data traffic increased by that much. Okay, why am I why am I uh, listing this? No, or no, because ito these are their uh, measures or definitions of good performance. This is what success looks like from their point of view. We are able to accelerate network rollout if we're able to spend CapEx, if we're able to build cell sites, if we're able to upgrade sites to 4G, if we're able to deploy 5G in areas that we have identified. So ito yung what success looks like from their point of view. Now, if this is what success looks like, from their point of view, each of these activities, meron yung mga different departments within Globe that contribute towards that success. Now, when you identify, what do they need to contribute to achieve this success? Pag na-identify mo yun, then you're able to develop no, a management control system. Okay? So management control system is the different activities no, that enable Globe to deliver all of these performance metrics. Okay? Which they defined as their uh, idea of what success looks like. No? So that's why it's very important. You, so this is their performance appraisal. No, this is what good performance looks uh, looks like for them. No, and that's very critical in management control. And we'll define, discuss more of that later. Okay, So I hope this first lecture is able to provide you with some insights of what management control looks like. Uh, as a practitioner, I, you know, I nag, nag work din ako in the private sector. You know? And when I work in the private sector or as a student, you always think about na, oh, being part of strategies, strategy setting or strategy formulation is the best kind of work. Okay? It's the sexy kind of work. You know? But actually, what's most important in organizations is not strategy formulation per se, but strategy implementation, which is control. Okay? Management control. Okay? If you're not able to implement the sexy strategies that you're able to formulate, it's nothing. It's a worthless piece of paper or a worthless PowerPoint presentation. You know, so 
uh, I was a CFO of an of a company before, you know. And as a CFO, management control is the one that's most important for me. Okay? Because you can always say on a piece of paper that this is our strategy, but who's accountable to deliver it? Someone has to deliver it. You know, as a CFO, that's my concern. Why why is that my concern as a CFO? You no, know, because I'm going to allocate resources for the performance of these strategies. Right? Someone has to be accountable with the money that we are going to spend. Right? And so therefore, there must be some uh, control to make sure that, that uh, managers are doing their job or are performing or implementing strategy as, as, uh, as envisioned by top-level management. Okay? So that's why management control is very important. Okay, so that's it. That's the end of the presentation. Thank you.